Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines, and I am talking to Jackie Stuck. I'm interviewing a guy who now I've been talking to for like three years or so um, with Auto Hockey. This is how um, it's actually. So, so before I, I switch over to Jackie and get his um, um, introduction to himself, I'm going I'm to say how we met. And so, for several, I, I'd say it was like a year, six months to a year, I was posting questions to the forum on web scraping stuff mostly. And after three or four times, I noticed um, Black Holy Man was this guy kept answering my questions for me and they always, everything worked and stuff and he cleared it. So I, at some point it took a while too, I finally saw that you had a website. And so I went to the website and then I saw, oh, here I can email him. So I, I wrote him a saying, you know, thank you. Cause like you spend a lot of time answering my questions and like it, it you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I knew that, um, but Anyway, we, we started talking. He's he's over in Denmark, um, and so again, Jackie, thank you because like I I talked with Joe D F and and Tank also. It's like everyone that works in the farm and puts in time. I just am so amazed at the amount of time and effort people put into that to help other people. Like it's in some ways a thankless job. So I want to make sure I thank people that do it because it um for those of us that are mere mortals, it, it's it's so helpful. Anyway, so. Tell us, tell us about yourself. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Joe. Yeah, Jackie, as, as some of you might know, and yeah, I've, I've been talking to Joe for quite a couple of years now, and I'd say just to grab the one about the forum, I think a lot of people, maybe not all, but at least those of us who don't have any kind of programming background or anything, we use the, the ability to help others learn ourselves. I think I've heard that for quite a lot of people. They, they might be missing a, a big project they can work on or anything else. And they, as myself, really love to go in and, and tackle problems they haven't tackled before, mm -hmm. like small Sudoku's or whatever it might be. It's, it's just kind of fun. But yeah, myself, I'm I'm from Denmark and right now I'm 39 and I have two kids and a wife and yeah, it, it's great. But I think I learned about Arahat Key back in 2012, where I was at a temporary position at a nearby hospital to here. And they had a lot of data that needed to be put in. But originally I was uh, I think it's called a technical drafter. I simply draw blueprints for yeah. buildings and it, it's great, but I had worked with that for maybe five years or so. And I had a need to uh, try other stuff because I'd come directly from school, taken my education and then worked for five years and was like, do I want to sit at a computer my whole life. And again, I tried different stuff. I was a postman. I drove with people's furniture. I, I did a lot of different types of stuff. And eventually I ended back in the office behind the computer screen. And this time <laughs> I ended up actually just copying text from this window to this window. And after doing that a couple of times, I like, there must be something, someone must have done something yeah. like having multiple items in a clipboard or whatever it might be. And I went looking and I actually quite quickly found out how key and then the ball just rolled from there. I built my first small script that would activate one window and click in a field. And I think it even dragged the mouse to, to select it and, and by doing that, copy it and send it to the other window. It's very simple, but it, it worked and it sparked my interest for a hotkey, that's for sure. You know, it, it's interesting because you, you said almost exactly with um, where, how I got into macros and using and also using a hotkey, but that like there's, there's got to be a better way to do this, right? There was just like this, this belief in me of like, there's just, there's gotta be something out there that like, I'm not gonna sit and do this. Like I will waste a week of time finding the solution, you know, and then crank it out as opposed to manually doing the same thing over and over. Um, but yeah, it, 
it's it's kind of sad that like both of us no one no one no one up above is pushing it right and telling you about those things and even there like we we just were stubborn enough right and had ourselves to go look for something um it, it's and I, I don't think much has changed since then right it's like it's you you don't hear about it in in corporate world or, or anywhere you work that like hey you know there even though rpa the robotic process automation i think is getting a little bit of notice but that's for much bigger jobs right on the back end of things and automating um but that day-to-day -day, like what you do simple stuff which like you just explained copy copying so many people do it over and over regardless yeah. of the program you're in one program and you got to take something and then you got to go to another one and, and write it down and i actually remember in my undergrad now granted this is 1999 um i i had to as part of my degree i had to take a computer class and even then i was pretty geeky right but i had to take this intro class so i'm i'm sitting there and i'm doing these stupid assignments in our lab and i look over this kid next to me and he's sitting there and he's he's writing stuff down and um, i'm like what, what what are you doing and he goes well we have to take this information and we have to put it you know on this other in in like in this other page and i'm like well, why don't you copy paste it and he's like what <laughs> and i'm like first off he's like he didn't think he could have two programs open at once oh. right that was the first one of like oh i i gotta close this and then i'll open the other one and then i'm like you know you ever hear alt tab um but yeah it was it's 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 amazing um what you'll see um yeah the um sorry i was trying to think because i know earlier you mentioned too that the general um overall process but um I can't think, I was thinking it, it led into the discussion we were having earlier about um, finding a better way to do something you know, and and just figuring it out. Um, it'll come back to me here in a bit. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll stick with the old, how is it like in, it, how do you think we can get auto hotkey to get better Oh, I don't know if it's aware and it's, you know, I mean, neither of us are like that. We love auto hotkey because it works and it's great. Right. But it's just, I want to get more people stop doing the mundane work and realize there's some way, any way to speed up what they're doing. Um, how, how is it we can get, let's just stick with auto hotkey though. How do we get more people, more bosses or, or more businesses and, or people to just realize there's, there's a better way to do things, a more automated way yeah i i do feel that's 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 a big question of course and the first couple of years where i was um, using auto hotkey i was always looking for a way to use it in in, oh. in every situation i was looking for how can i do this with auto hotkey and it made me build some amazing stuff. And as, as people may have seen different graphs of how long do, does, does it take to develop compared to how long yes. does it take to do manually and stuff like that. I didn't really think about that because I just made my work fun. That wasn't my by, goal. Yeah. By automating it. Yeah. So, so when I had mundane tasks, instead of thinking, oh, that's, I'll, okay, let me just, hammer down and, and get it done. I was like, oh, oh, I, 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 can, I can write it's a script game. for this. Yeah. This, yeah, it, it yeah. is actually a gamification. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. totally right. And, and I was loving it. And I, I it made them over and over again. And some of them I will absolutely have made um, or have used too much time on. Uh -huh compared to maybe you have just done it manually. What I, what I then noticed over time was that, okay, these tasks actually do reappear on my desk. Exactly. Yes. That's uh, what I was going to say. Yeah. Sometimes maybe not exactly the same, right. But it's close. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as soon as that happens, you already have in your mind or whatever you'd call it, You've learned yourself the steps that the computer needs to take to uh, do yep. a task like this. Not not the exact task, but it makes it much easier to automate a similar task the next time. And yeah, yeah, that's 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 one of the ways. So so I 
kind of feel like that people just, um, as you said yourself, maybe learn about it in some way and people are very afraid of code yeah. as, 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 as a concept. They, they believe that it's unreadable. It's, um, you can't understand it. And I'd still say that when I have people that sit maybe next to me because we're making something together, mm -hmm. or Excel automation or whatnot. And when they look at it after a bit of time, they may not be able to um, write it, yeah. but most of them can understand the yeah. logic. And maybe tweak it a little. Yeah. Yet, yeah, those that have that kind of interest would be able to actually tweak it, yeah. but at least they can understand that it just comes from the top down. And of course, if it gets too involved with jumping around with functions and stuff like that, but the yeah. overall idea that it's just something that comes sequentially, yeah. they seem to grasp that pretty quickly. And I would love for people to see that as an option for their day-to-day -day tasks instead of just thinking, oh, I need to do this over and over and over. And people, people are starting to do it and they may know that there is a rule in Outlook that can send the mail to a specific place and they'll use that on one particular irritating thing they yeah. get each week, but those they get each month or whatever, they never do it there. Those they just drag because, hey, you don't, don't want to use any more time on that. Right. And right. if they had just used the software functionality that was there, they wouldn't have to use any mental ever. capacity on yeah. ever again. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, it is, this is a hard question to actually say, how do we get something that out of hard key to be used by more people? Yeah. Because they, maybe they don't need a, an epiphany, but they need something that tells them that they don't need that. And at my work, I have at least two people who I, I believe without knowing for sure I think they're afraid for their job. Yeah. If it gets that the task they do get automated, they they kind of feel like, but what what am I gonna do then? Well, but what the irony though is, if they would actually learn how to automate stuff, then they would have job security, right? Yeah. That's that's that that part I don't understand. It's like I can understand the fear of it. But it's like that means that's when you know you need to up your game, right? You need to make your spell self special. You need to. Um, actually, I was I was telling you I was reading this book, and I, I was talking about um, the uh, build equity in yourself, right? Invest in yourself so you bring value, and and then you'll stay around, right? I mean that's that's the or or you can get a raise. Yeah. Um, the other thing actually that I remembered um, what I was thinking about earlier on was you mentioned. Um, the um that you would you would just pick um for doing the forum support right you would want to learn all these different things and um it, it, that and something else you mentioned a minute ago of like how hard it is for people to read um i i spoke with um raptor x uh, a, a while ago we did an interview and and he he had a, a really fine point of literally thinking about like learning a computer language as another language right as, as something like russian right or mm -hmm. whatever and um and what was fascinating was like I, I saw some really good parallels, though, but, but the one that jumped to my mind originally was if I had decided to learn um, French, I wouldn't just randomly every once in a while pick up a French dictionary and read a word, right? When you try to learn a language, like another language you're going to speak it, it's, you know, it's, you have a plan, you do it every day, and you step through it, right? And there's this order. And yet, when people learn like a computer language, right, they, I mean, sorry, unless you're a programmer, right? You kind of half into it. But I, I think with that was what made me think about it is, is your exception is like, you're like, you, I want to learn this. So you found a way to get you to try all these different things, right? And, and then and it forced you to have this experience and you kept learning, even though you didn't have those needs. 
which was brilliant because I think by doing that, you're like, oh, wait, a, you know, oh, hey, I can use something like that now that you've solved it, right? You can see how like, yeah, I can see how people are using it. Um, but I, I thought that was a, a really interesting way. And then the other one was um, I made the, the similarity to say, uh, so like, let's say if I'm a, a, a Spanish speaker, um, I can pick up, you know, French or Italian, right, or another Latin language very easily, but picking up Mandarin would be much harder. And so I was like, that to me is like, I can pick up auto hotkey, right, much easier than if I was learning a, a mainframe, you know, something that's the, what's it called, the machine level programming, right? Uh, yeah. And it's like, hey, you don't have to start on the hardest language out there, right? You can, you can start on the easier one. But boy, have a plan, right? Don't just, I, I, we're all busy, I get that. But, um, you know, take the time and, and dedicate yourself and improve yourself. And that's, that's where I'm like, you know, it, I, was, I, I interviewed my, my friend Gabe, who he, he came out for one webinar. And we were talking about how we, you know, we every, almost every year we'll have a codecation where we, you know, we block off like a, a, a five to seven days and we just code for like, you know, 12 to whatever. I mean, sometimes it's a really long day and, uh, and we're not making money off it. We're just trying to learn. Right. And, and, and it's like, I wish more people would, it's, I, I honestly, I wish we had companies and bosses and parents and whatnot to tell you, you guys should learn this. Um, but it just in school, like, and that's oh, why aren't schools teaching? You can do this. I don't know. Um, yeah. but, but I think more people like, and maybe it's a, a part of today's society is there's less people that are willing to accept that they're in charge of their destiny, right? I, I can decide whether I, you know, do X or Y. It's just I'm going to go to work and um, taking responsibility type of thing, right? And 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 I think a lot of cultures nowadays it's becoming less and less of like it's it's on you. Someone else is taking care of you as opposed to you are taking care of yourself. Um, anyway. Yeah, maybe that, but that's why it's a, a harder thing to get is less people are, are thinking they are responsible. I think I've heard from also millennials are, are often young people are, are much more likely to not have that kind of attitude, right? Of mm -hmm. not willing to invest their own time um, to, to, to learn more on their own time and dime and, um, you know. Yeah, <laughs> of course it gets a little bit philosophical now but yeah that that's one of the things that i've thought about because recently i've, I've heard also self speakers and then uh, whatever self improvement talks and and also i i'm i've i'm pretty interested in in where are we heading headed where what what kind of technologies i read kind of like science at the edge of whatever i can find and I, I just find that fun, but yeah, if if you look at all of this, that people within our industry or whatever you'd call it, our interest field, yeah. it yeah. is it it seems as if yeah, self-driving cars, all of that stuff. But yeah, all of these office jobs where where you just do mundane typings, proofreading, stuff like that. Sitting there receiving um, invoices and yeah. doing stuff with them and sending them off to someone else, all of those I, I can't list all of the possibilities that sure. are there. But if you don't create something, I was just about to say from nothing, but I, that's not what I'm actually yeah. meant. But yeah, if you don't really um, change it in a way, add, add value. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Add value. Um, then your job is is at risk because yeah. amen. Yeah. At some point, within uh, years, I don't know the amount of years, but these software solutions will just come in from the side and yeah work. You're gone. Yeah. Uh, they'll they'll be implemented from let's say an IT department or someone will offer it to your company or whatever for a discount price or a monthly fee uh, that it, you, you can't even compare it to what a human actually costs. Right. And because most of this stuff can be uh, documented to be 
maybe not infallible, but at least near perfect uh, or very yeah. consistent in what it does. Reliably, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it can be hard to actually compete with stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so I believe that the future of whatever we do with robots and all of that is we'll probably do more stuff with a human interaction and then maybe very creative art work, whatever. Music yeah, I, like um, case in point, so um, a lot of uh, um, some, I think it's Seattle and a couple other in California, here in the United States, they um, they argued for mi greatly raising minimum wage, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, I, I, have, I have, honestly, I have no idea what it is now. Let's say it's $10 an hour. I, I don't know. Uh, but they wanted it, like, to be $20 an hour. They wanted, like, two to three times the price, right? Um, and, of course, the very first things most corporations did was started figuring out ways to automate the jobs that are those people have, because it just wasn't worth it. The money that those people brought in just wasn't worth justifying that big pay raise. So they were finding ways to have like kiosks and things like at McDonald's or wherever to, mm -hmm. to you know, to, to reduce, you don't reduce all of the human inner, you know, people, but you go from, let's say a size of 30 employees, probably down to eight, I don't know. Um, but it was one of those things of like exactly what you just said, right? Is and boy, unless you're adding value to what you're doing and improving, you know, even when you're adding value, like, boy, the, the more you can do to, to differentiate yourself and, and show that you're doing more, um, it's both job, just um, security, as well as races, right? Um, yeah, I, I'd say that, of course, at, at this time or point of where we are right now, where everybody or almost any kind of job has some computer in it somewhere. Um, and the amount of people able to code and the amount of software able to do people's jobs are at a minimum still. So we are in the sweet spot, I believe, because for the average worker to actually be able to automate their day is rarely seen. Uh, yeah. And and I've really benefited from it. Sure. In the last yeah. two jobs, I, I got both uh, promotions and raises. And this current job I have now, where I've totally switched gears from where I was to something that's more, uh, much more IT related um, yeah. and centered. Let, so let's let me be, and I'm not going to give any specifics. But I know we were talking about this a couple years ago before you changed jobs. Your last company, when you talked about leaving, they were offering you an amazing amount of money to keep you yeah right yeah. And, and that was where i remember it was like it was an, and you knew it was like an insane amount because it was there was other stuff going on but um like clearly they they saw your value right they saw it too late but they yeah. saw your value um and it's it's awesome to have it even if you don't get take it right it's it's like to see that they they get it right um yeah, yeah, and it, it was funny with that company because I actually had a sluggish start where my my day-to-day -day, uh, management was like, mm, I'm not sure you're lifting your weight and <laughs> the stuff you're doing, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, yeah. what's that? And, and to me and to my colleagues, what I was doing wasn't so par in any way, so it felt kind of personal, but I yeah. kind of sat it out and, and did my stuff and automated when I could and, and all of that. And then all of a sudden, someone at the desk next to me, he was sitting there writing stuff down. And I was like, what are you doing? Why, why are you writing stuff down? <laughs> We're working at the computer here. Yeah. And then he said, oh, but just as you had said, yeah. We're, we're moving this value from this window. And then, and it was within the same program then we move this value from here and then I click that and then this loads and then I put it in over here. I was like, how many times do you have to do it? It yeah. was a lot, right? Yeah. It was, I remember he, he had to write down maybe 20 values on each page and then load the other and type them back in. And I was like, Oh, yeah. you, I, I have something for you. <laughs> I, I really said that to him and, yeah. and, I, I can't remember exactly where it was, but it was one of the first times I shared that I could automate it. 
yeah. for someone else. Yeah. Before that, I just automated my own work. Yeah. And made a couple of GUI things for other people, but without their knowing, uh, so to speak. They were using something that I had made, but they actually didn't know I had made it. You just gave them a program, so to yeah, speak. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. And, but yeah. this time was where I actually did it. And from there on out, I just ended up automating all different types of things all around the company. And that's also why, as you said yourself, I actually ended up being offered quite a lot yeah. of money to stay. Yeah, and, and um, I also, you know, actually before before you and I were talking, I, I worked for a guy and I was, at the time I wasn't really using auto hotkey to, to automate that stuff. But um, it was at the same company, and he absolutely loved me. Um, he knew, he saw the value, he saw everything I did. Um, and then I actually got a better, or I got a different offer in another company. I quit, and I left. Um, and then I ended up hitting that job, so I went back to, um, to TI. But I went in, back in in internet marketing instead of under research. And then I worked for different people, and that was where, like, you saw a lot of the email. I mean, I literally have emails from my boss telling me not to automate things, right? And, and not any reasoning, right? just i mean the insanity um and then the lack of reward i mean it was so bizarre um but like a, you didn't say you did this but i i used to i would automate things and i wouldn't even tell anybody because i would get in trouble right but i'm like i'll be damned if i'm going to manually do this over and over i'll just use it just for myself and not share it with i had two colleagues i could have easily given it to and they could have been just as fast as i was but i'm like All right, i'm just gonna keep it myself mm -hmm. but the lack you know that was when i stop getting big reward, you know, for, for really cranking out, doing work, doing amazing stuff. And, and then I finally just quit because like, I'm, I'm, it was so, my job was easy. I got paid a lot of money and I couldn't stand it. Like I just couldn't stand it. It was, it was very like detrimental to me. So I finally just quit. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's amazing how the work environment <laughs> It, it really does seem to be like some you're often your boss like in their their and and that's where I'm not sure on that one if it's the insecurities or their level of knowledge of understanding what you're doing or the risk involved that was that one article I, I sent the other day I was it, where it talked about something injecting into a DLL or something yeah code injection and I, that wasn't really my point of the thing but like the fears that they talked about that was what I thought a lot of people who when you you mentioned automating, that's what they're afraid of, right? Like you're actually changing the core of what you're doing and it can crash and burn and, you know, destroy it. And like, no, we're just often sending keystrokes or programmatically connecting with the program. It's not gonna change the actual essence of the program. No, and just also maybe an anecdote or whatever you yep. call it. I have people asking me about some kind of small Windows message over here uh, is it okay if I click this? And yeah, yeah, yeah you can click that. That's fine. Um, and and they come over. What, what's this? And and I simply read the message that the box says, and then yeah, say, yeah just say cancel to that. That's fine. And it was just, oh, are you sure you want to exit this program? If you don't click save, you'll re lose your work. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. And, and they they haven't read it. And I wow. see that often, not wow. not like uh, all the time, uh, yeah, but constantly, frequently but enough. Yeah. Frequently enough. Yeah. And, uh, and then they go into a program. It might be an office program, whatever it might be. And they get a message box. And if it's not, do you want to save or not? They, they stall and like, I don't want to um, um, uh, destroy the computer or whatever. Like, yeah totally improportional to to clicking a, a window button yeah so so yeah there is a good amount of um fear when it fear comes to kind of, yeah, yeah yeah and and of course we we know that code is uh, it has a lot, lot of quirks here and there whatever the programmer did so yeah you can crash stuff and you can lose your work and all of that different types of stuff but it's quite hard to actually damage the computer with normal use yeah yeah no doubt um 
that was I, I it was making me think of something I but I, I lost my my train of thought on it uh, but yeah it's uh it is just amazing of the the different levels of knowledge and in, in their fears and then some like one of my bosses my first boss in internet marketing at TI um, he, he I think it was about a year I worked for him he, he didn't understand technology but yet he's in charge of the internet marketing group and it was okay he, he trusted, he listened, he trusted. I could explain concepts to him and he would, you know, and he, there was never this irrational fear of like just not getting it. He also wouldn't make decisions like he'd come consult with whoever and you know, like was mm -hmm. the expert. Okay, okay, I get it, you know. And um, and I had no issues at all working for him. He was, it was awesome. And he actually saw a lot of stuff I did and, and automated. His one concern was like, well, what if you get hit by a bus, right? Because like, who else can do it? You know, and I'm yeah. like, that's a, you know, okay, I get that. But hey, auto hockey is an easy language to pick up, right? Someone else could easily pick it up. Um, yeah, I, I believe so as well. But of course, um, I, I can't really assert who can and who can pick up code, uh, coding. But to me, it seems like the, 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 the more simple concepts of, like say, our hotkey, you can learn to do a hotkey with an if statement. It it is pretty simple, yeah. uh, and and we, within normal human comprehension, without actually. One of one of the big things I know is that people need to pay attention to the detail in the syntax. So if there is a colon before the equal sign, that's actually needed. If there is no space between the word and the um, parentheses, um, that that's also important. Some languages will allow different types of yeah. stuff. But if you see it in one specific way, it's probably needed. There, there's most likely a reason that it's there. You don't just have quotes around strings just for fun. They're actually there for a reason. And that's, I think, maybe what people, when they look at code, kind of scrambles it for them. They're just used to looking at text and not putting too much emphasis on all of these like extra things. They read it, they know it has meaning, they automatically gives it, gives it whatever meaning it, meaning it has. So if there's parentheses, it's probably something that's added in. But here in coding, it it is so important that it will not work if you do it wrong. Sure, yeah. And, and, and if you write text, cool. yeah. I was gonna say, um, it's kind of like, think about it as math. And when you're talking about the parens and you're doing simple math, right? And man, if you, if you don't, if you do four times three minus one and you put those parens in the, you know, in the wrong place, you can definitely easily get the wrong answer. Yeah. Thankfully it'll, or maybe not thankfully, but you know, you'd kind of hope it wouldn't actually work. The problem is it still often will work and you don't realize you have the wrong answer. Um, scripting, thankfully that doesn't often happen, right? When what stuff we're doing, it just won't run because mm -hmm. there's something wrong. <clears throat> yeah, something but, will actually help you because there is an interpreter or there is a compiler or there is something yeah. where someone else has actually uh, taken the steps of writing code that actually checks that for yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Whereas the, the, the deeper you get down, maybe at C or something, you're often almost no help. You have yeah. to do it correctly. And and that's that's just... Mm, I think that's what's in the mind of a lot of people. So when they actually pick up one of the languages and see how, hey, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not getting punished at every turn. Yeah. It actually tries to help me here and there and everywhere. Um, putting on warn in, in auto hotkey, which might even warn you about stuff that isn't truly right. needed, but good yes. practice. Recommended, yeah. So, yeah. so case in point, when I, this is quite a few years ago, um, I was trying to learn VBA and um, I, it, it, I would keep trying to do something, but when I was doing it, it, it's like, oh, you need to declare the variable, you need to give it the certain type, you know, and do all these steps before. And it would take me so long to actually get to my stupid message box that like, finally, I'm like, you know what, forget it, right? It's just not worth it. Um, a couple years later, 
someone was like, well, you can put a, I forget what the call was, but it basically said, um, don't make it, make it um, something exclusive where it didn't you require. So VBA doesn't actually have to have you tell it the type of variable and all the stuff. It just built the default is to have that requirement on, but you can turn that off and it'll work almost like auto hotkey does in the same way. Right. And I'm like, why is that the default, right? Why don't they have that reverted? Because I would have stuck with it and I probably would have picked up programming, you know, 10 years earlier. Um, it just was, I didn't have someone to ask, you know, and I was sitting there reading a book and trying to program. And um, yeah, it, it's auto hockey is really great at, at making it easy to get started. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of advocates for the strongly typed languages. Yeah. And I think that's that's what's happened with VBA is that someone is sitting there and says, hey, I believe it's best to declare variables first. So we'll keep that as the default because oh. that's just best practice. And right. yeah, it, it, that discussion can go on for uh, and 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 I'm sure that in let's say bigger projects where where multiple coders or programmers or developers are actually working together, it, it's it it is best practice to let's say have a list of variables that are declared and where they should fit and you know for sure that you don't get uh, let's say a string when you need a number, yeah. it makes sense, but yeah. To, to what most people with a day-to-day -day automation need that AutoHotKey normally helps with. Yeah. It, it's not, it doesn't feel as if it's needed. I, I remember uh, a, a good friend of mine here, he, he's a Java programmer for 20 years and, uh, and, and he, he's the guy is just brilliant, right? He can explain any programming concept to me or even someone below my level um, and easy to understand, like clear to me, I'm like, oh, he's an awesome resource. But when I was like trying to, I think I was asking him about classes and like, why, you know, give me a good reason why I should use classes. And, and he went in this long explanation of, especially the sharing of things between like someone else was writing something and you're not, I forget all the terms he used, but you're not making it where they can peek inside and get other stuff and all those things. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I don't do any of that stuff. You know, <laughs> I'm like, that's not that's that's an argument if you have that need then i get it but you know what like i i have yet to i i've written a class to play with it to see how it worked but i haven't written one for a real live oh here i'm trying to solve this thing oh i'll create a class to do this because i just haven't seen the need maybe you know i'm sure i've had a, a couple opportunities where i could have used one but um i've just been using functions and and you know that seems to be a lot of what i'm doing yeah, I'd say functions is still the the normal go to for me. Where where a class is, of course, to me a collection of of functions. So you have them in the same space, and and with with the amount of calm code that I've, I've written for our hotkey, yeah. I am very very accustomed to, to the dot syn syntax that you see there. So it, it makes good sense, but I keep hitting some kind of snag when, when doing classes. Uh -huh. so, so I feel like I'm using a little bit too much time on building the code yeah. compared yeah. to getting the functionality. And yeah. that, that's just me. That's not because I'm saying it's, it's, uh, it's not something you, you right. should do, but I try to make classes when it fits, but my go-to is still just to make a function. Yeah. Because, yeah. It, yeah, and I get how I agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I, my library of functions and like even I'll have a, a I forget what it's called, but a, a function library, I guess, where the function mm -hmm. is the, the name up until an underscore, right? And then everything under it starts with the first, the same name. And so it's all in one file. Yeah. Um, which I love, but um, a while ago, actually, Maestrith was helping me. Where we were, we're we're scaling our our email and everything, and I'm like, you know what? I I want to build a, a database system where I can I can import people from like let's say Facebook or LinkedIn or wherever. I can pull people in, 
and then they can check if they're in the database. If they're not there, we'll run them through this verify IO um, API call to verify the email address. And if it's valid, we'll dump them in and subscribe them. And then um, over time, I can run a query to say, hey, who's in my list? And it'll it'll pull people who are subscribed, of course, to a certain topic and whatnot. And, um, but we were thinking, because I'm going to have whether they opened or sent the email or read the email, it's going to be the database is going to get large fast, right? And so um, with Matrix's class, the XML class, the way he uses it, it starts breaking down after, let's say, I don't know, 50,000 rows or whatever. It's, it's pretty high, but in SQL stuff and databases, it can get to hundreds of thousands of rows very quickly. So I, I wanted to, to look at using like a database. And anyway, um, Jean Lalonde had, had incorporated using SQLite into his QAP, Quick Access Pop-Up Tool. Mm -hmm. And so we asked him if he could give us a demo of like how how it works, the 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 class that I forget who wrote it, um, that 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 um, you know he he had developed. So Jean, Jean's walking us, just showing us like what, how the demo he walked through, and Maestrith is looking at. It. Of course, he plays with classes all the time, and so he's looking at it and he's like, oh wait, oh here, and you could just hear his his, his mind just whirling. Like I'm looking at the stuff, and like it made no sense to me, but um. He, he was getting it and he's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite all this because he's like, I see what they did, but there's a lot of wasted things here. And he's already thinking through how he's going to restructure it. Um, and by the way, we, we are, we were playing with it and doing, running SQL queries on the database, updating it with auto hotkey, you know, updating the database, pulling things in and drop them out. But um, he actually built a GUI within that to submit SQL to hit the database. Um, and, we, and we'd run it and say like, out of this list of 500,000 I had a 500,000 list of email addresses with about 20 fields. And we'll say, hey, give me everyone who starts with Joe as their email address. And like, it's like a second, it, it pulls back that list. I mean, it's, it's really fast. Um, so I was stoked of like, wow, I actually have, this is gonna be a cool system that I can have that will keep, keep track of all my stuff and actually have it in a database where I'm not too worried about the file getting corrupted or you know or whatnot, um, and speed isn't going to be an issue. So I'm I'm stoked. But um, anyway, watching him play with classes, that's how I'd be. Is like I can I can use a class, but um, man, writing one from scratch and then even then, unless someone really documents it, which often anyone who can write a class, they're usually pretty advanced or at least somewhat advanced, and anyone somewhat advanced is knows enough where they don't feel like they have to actually document it because they can just look at it and it makes sense to them, right? So often when I find classes, they're not really well documented. The, the up, it's kind of like a function library. At the top, it'll be documented, but actually in the weeds, they're not telling you what's going on and why. Yeah, yeah. I know from, from one of the bigger projects I'm working on currently that, yeah, I've, I've, I've done what I could to give good names to the functions and to the variables and, and stuff like that. So they almost say what they do. So yeah. uh, actually, but, yeah, because I've seen, I remember we were walking through one of years and, and some of the names are like really, really long, right? Yeah. You literally write out a sentence to, to name it. Yeah, because, and, and it comes from me knowing that I will not remember get, yeah, I will not get to do a comment when when I've written the name of the function. Uh, I'm on to something else. I, 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 like I'm, I miss the step of actually doing sitting down there and typing out a comment. I do it right. a couple of times here and there, but yeah, I, I forget or I jump on to the next thing, and to kind of uh, fix that for Which, myself. Yeah, 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 I love it. Yeah. I'll, I'll just simply extend the name of the function. That's me. Of course, uh, if I was interested in keeping the code base small or optimized or whatever it might be, and, and yep. we've talked about that before, Joe, that, okay, if you do this with, let's say, string split, yep. you will get um, the job done with a command, or you can use str split, which will create an object that holds yeah. the splitted parts. And of course, the one that creates the object has a lot more overheat than just using the command. Yeah. 
And to me, with my projects, I don't feel that it matters. Oh yeah, ever so slightly at all because I might be be creating something now that's big enough to maybe consider something like that. But up until now, yeah. No. The um, actually, and you, I think you were the one that that showed me this, and I was blown away because I didn't realize, like on that kind of a function on, on stir split, that I can just at the end of it put like dot two and get the second one or the third, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, right when I saw him, like, I was just so in love because before I would, let's say I was first using the command and first you got to do it and then you got to get like, you know, save it as a variable and then get the certain one. And even when I was using the function, I would do it to save, get the array and then call the second one. I didn't realize I don't even have to save the variable. I can just put it in my, where I'm using it. And if I don't need it somewhere else, like it's just gone, right? Yeah. And, and so. I love the shortness of the code of like, I, I'm not saving a variable then having to delete it or worry or whatever. It's just, it's, I use, I don't know the right way to say that. It's like a reference, I guess, right? Yeah. Is you, you put it in there, it's never saved as an actual variable. It's just, it, it, it calculates it when it runs and it's gone. And like, I love that, absolutely love that. It, yet it's something like, I don't think that's documented on, on the actual help page on that one function or, or in any that I've ever seen where they have a list where like, you want the fourth one, get this. Maybe, maybe in objects where it talks about the not pop, but what, what are some of the other ones where you're, you can, you can get a, you know, the, the fifth item in the list. Yeah. But yeah, it's just not, um, never caught my eye before until I think, like I said, I think you brought it up in the call and I'm like, what, what is, what is, what are you doing there? Um, yeah. And that's one of those things I'd say for someone who's not a programmer, you look at something like that, what's this uh, dot four, and it just seems kind of random, right? Um, you get it so simple, like once you realize, oh, this is my delimiter, and this will be the fourth one of whatever you're splitting on, right? Oh, wow, okay, that's easy. Yeah, hey, yeah. I, I'll put you on the spot, because we, we didn't talk about this before. Um, we're, we've been doing the webinars for what, like two hours, uh, two hours, two years now, roughly. Yeah. Um, where do you think we're, what should we, should you think we should dial it up more? What do you think is a best approach for um, just keep going with where we have? Because, you know, our, our audience is somewhat mixed. Um, yeah. We've talked about having a couple intro to auto hockey yet. I think that, um, for our webinars, often people are the ones that attend. A lot of them are way above that, um, but um, at the same time, I I, I want to keep our audience happy, and and I also want to bring able to bring in people who it's not they don't get frightened by the first one they attend and leave. I'd say that yeah, with with the one we're having the, this one, the next one we're having yeah. where where we are maybe at the maximum level we have ever been. Yeah. I don't think we have been at a higher level than this. And as you said yourself, we are now catering to someone who's really been without a hotkey or have some pre-knowledge to really get the the, the essence of, of all of it, at least, or some of it. You, you need to have some kind of level already mm -hmm. when you attend. But as you said yourself, the hotkey community as a whole, we have some people like ourselves that has been with the community for a lot of years, maybe five plus years or something like that. And then you have all of the uh, the lurkers, people who's also been without a hotkey for quite some time, but who really really doesn't show up. Uh, who are reading, who's there, who's available, who might come to a webinar here and there, maybe not make a fuss out of it. And then we have all of the beginners. And and I do believe, I, at one point I was counting on the forum and there was at least 20 new users a day. Wow. Yeah, or 20 posts from users who hadn't posted before. Okay. I, I can't say that this is consistent, but at least when I was watching it, when yeah. I helped a lot of people, Yep. That was the incline of people was at about 20 who actually posted. How many actually subscribed or when oh, they it's gotta subscribed be and all tenfold. 
yeah, yeah I would say yeah and, and of course at any one time uh, doing whatever hour I look at the forum there's at least a hundred plus something active it seems like oh, okay uh, I don't have the up-to-date numbers but at, at least when I looked at it so if you have 24 hours a day and there's always a hundred active users um, and 20 of the new posts out of maybe uh, something 40 posts or something in a day it feels like maybe half is new users every day we have 410 users online right now yeah by the way yeah it's 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 maybe not european prime time but the europeans haven't all gone to bed yeah. or the people here and as you know, your time in, in the US is also a, a good time for actually using a computer. So a good amount of where the hotkey users is located is online right now. So yeah, but 400 what, and something, that's great. What's interesting is only 16 are registered out of 410. Yeah, that's all the lurkers. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. So yeah. yeah um, yeah, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot in the webinars, but um, I was just thinking about like, I, I know we talked about having a couple intro webinars. It's just maybe we'll we'll plan a different Tuesday or something to have at least one of them. Um, I think most people watching this probably know we, we have a hot strings course in Udemy um, that uh, I, hot strings is is you know it, it's it's one of the things that i i tell virtually everybody about of like it is the simplest fastest easiest way to be more productive on a computer if, if you're not using them right it's so easy to everyone has a degree that you can use them right it's it's the quickest simplest way that anybody that works in a computer could really be much more efficient um in my opinion yeah and and yeah and and you have that uh, I'm, I'm almost inclined to call it an abomination, but yeah, you have a script that is so massive with so many um, uh, yeah. hot strings uh, right. so that you have had to actually give your hot strings a specific type of structure to remember right. them all. Yeah. Uh, makes good sense, but the amount of stuff you can do with the typing of, let's say, four keystrokes is just yeah it's 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 mind-boggling that you can always have let's say your uh, colleagues email address within right. the click of three buttons or something right. tapped yeah. out in the field that you're in right now or let's say you have uh, a pre-written email that you always use if you don't use let's say outlook at work but at your home computer you're losing whatever uh, email client you use and you have something that you like to end your e your um, emails with or if you always want to post a new quote you could build a hot string for that whatever uh, you, you feel like it, it's just it's it's amazing what you can actually do it's yours. sorry someone was at my door I thought I might as well look at who's there, but um, I don't know who they are, so I'm not answering. Um, yeah, it. Uh, hold on, one um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's a, it's such a super easy way that everybody I think could benefit in some way. Um, but there, obviously, there's a ton of other uses, right? And that's the, the I think the the plus and the minus. Um, hold on, just one second. All right, sorry, I had to take a little bio break. Um, so Jackie, what um, we were talking a little bit earlier about it, but let's think through of like, you know, how do we get more people to use auto hotkey, right? What's what's holding people back? Why is like, do you think part of the name too, auto hotkey itself is, is a, a big restriction of people using it? Kind of, yeah, the, the name is stuff can be called anything. Today, people are called all kinds of things and and like what's the clothing trend there there may not be one but yeah the the name auto hotkey which which really focuses on hotkeys yeah 
makes a lot of sense because it's very, very easy to make a hotkey, write some code and activate it with that hotkey. I still use it, I'd say every day. Oh, we, oh some, yeah. Some kind of hotkey and, and have something that is inspired. Yeah. So, so the name fits well enough with, with one of the cornerstones of what the language can do. Uh, so, but, but to actually change the name, what should the name then be? Yeah. Oh or, yeah, we'll never get an agreement on that. Yeah. People, people have, have already shortened it down to A-H-K, which works for people I, yeah. in the know. So, yeah, yeah, it, I, I like it. Yeah. So if you know our hotkey, you know that those three letters means our hotkey to you. And I don't think we should shift to calling it just that because uh -huh. then it will be too arbitrary, just uh -huh. letters and people will have absolutely no idea. Where I think the, the people coming in, seeing the name our hotkey, they feel more like it's a macro program something easily usable yeah. for them because they can read meaning out of the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I get it, yeah. Whereas if you read Python, you think, what? <laughs> it, it doesn't really point you anywhere. Right. Um, and, and that is seen as one of the greatest starting languages at all, sure. of, of all yeah. the languages maybe. Um, I'm not really sure why, but I've tried it myself and, and yeah, you can grasp it. You can probably pick it up if you, you use enough time on it. Um, and, and of course, we, because the community of Python is as big as it, is, as it is, you can do even more because each time you have someone investing their time and their effort in a language, you get something out of it that people can use at a later time. Um, but again, with something as big as that, where people are actually being hired and people are, are searching for people with uh, Python uh, capabilities or uh, whatever you call it, you have an entirely um, industry type job situation and all of that, where with a hotkey, which is way smaller, but you can automate I, I don't know enough about uh, Python, but let's say 80% of the same things. Yeah, sure. Python is a scripting language, our hotkey is a scripting language. Python is written in something else and our hotkey is written in something else. Our hotkey is limited to Windows per yep. se. So of course it has a limitation there compared to Python. But again, they ain't far off to each other. When, when just looking at the surfaces of them. But our hotkey still doesn't have any, or at least not many job offerings, or even, even the community as a whole doesn't really, I wouldn't say allow for- Fiction maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're very hesitant to talk at all about making money with auto hotkey. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and um, uh, it's frowned upon. Maybe is a better and by some people, right? Not obviously not everybody. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Our, our hotkey, uh, of course, has a specific license and it's open source and it it attracts some specific people uh, because of it, uh, and some have been been with it for a very long time and and feel very strongly about open sourceness and yeah. things like that. But to really move a language from maybe hobby or cheats and bugs and hacks and whatever mm -hmm. types of stuff our hotkey is often associated with. You have, you, you need someone who can sit down and say that they're professional, that mm -hmm. they do our hotkey uh, maybe as a living or at least is a freelance type of thing that they right. get some pay for doing what they're good at with our hotkey. Right. And, and the community doesn't really have much room for that, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, um, and I know I've told you this, but I'm, I've, 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 I've never been shy about it, but I've, 
I can easily say I've made at least, I'd say around 25,000, maybe a little more um, with automating stuff, you know, straight up writing programs for people and automating it um, with auto hotkey. And yet you, I don't think I've ever posted much about that on the forum because I know it's, there'll be certain people who will not take it in a positive way. <laughs> right. So I've, I don't mention it just because for that reason, but um, I, I think there is a lot. It, it's I, I think we're in a, a, a it's the chicken or the egg kind of scenario, right? Of like, we want more people to more bosses and, and people to find say, hey, we want people who know how to do this um, and we'll pay you, but they don't even know you can because if I post about it, right, then like I, I, I'm afraid that they're, I'm not afraid of ramifications, but I just, it's more about I don't want to stir up a hornet's nest of conversation and, and just have any of the dialogue because I don't think I'm going to convince anyone otherwise. So I just stay off of the topic entirely. Um, yeah. But and if I, if yeah. we don't actually do it though, then how are the, the bosses and managers ever going to realize like there's people out here that do this, right? That, that's where I was going with that is, is uh, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, uh, as I see it is that in our company, I know that the IT department that's separate from me, they, they have a few of these uh, known uh, automation uh, mm -hmm. softwares available and, and they apply it to a, a few things here and there. I don't know the extent of it, but at least they, they do it. But it can just be done in so many more places yeah. with, with something like Auto Hotkey and in the average person's hands. You you can automate so many more tasks. And of course, getting a, a level that is worth paying for that, of course, but if people don't have that inclination to become good enough to get paid to do it, yeah. because they might not, or they may never believe that that's a possibility. Because as you yourself said, everybody who's proficient enough to get paid for doing auto hotkey stuff keeps it to themselves right. kind of because right. the, 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 the community doesn't really uh, seem accepting when, yeah. when, when that topic comes up. So it's kind of always done like someone asks yeah. specific yeah. people Psst. or Psst. buddy. Psst. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think it was a year or maybe more ago where I actually was hired as a freelancer for a company. Oh yeah, I, I was remember. out and and hired uh, a number of of our hotkey developers, right. and they had okay success with that. Um, I, I I had a, a Skype talk with with one of them the other day, and I stopped for multiple reasons we weren't in the same time zone. It was getting kind of hard and they had a decline of work at one point. So they were kind of like putting everybody on hold and uh -huh. yeah, life happened here. So yeah, I, I had a lot of other stuff to do and sure. they kept at least a few of them on. I don't know exactly how many of them they actually kept on, but I talked to one of them on Skype the other day and it's at least still a thing. They, they still have people hired to do our hotkey automation. Uh, and that should just be a bigger thing. Yeah. That if people actually, I know that Tank and a few others has mentioned that they use our hotkey at their work. Right. Just like I did when, when we began this, that I, that I use it for my personal tasks and stuff yeah. like that. But to actually be hired because right. of that skill or right. be offered money because you can automate something. And to me, it's like if someone actually wants to pay someone else to write whatever, it might be um, uh, a cheat or a, a fast clicker or um, whatever it might be, we shouldn't actually frown upon it as a community. There, there might be situations where it shouldn't be um, uh, not well, encouraged. 
yeah, yeah. You might yeah. not want our hotkey to be known for cheating and stuff like that. But again, if someone is willing to pay, why not let them? If someone is willing to take the work, I don't see it as an issue. If, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so just a case in point, um, I just typed in auto hotkey in um, LinkedIn under people and there were 3,935 results. So nearly 4,000 people have the word auto hotkey somewhere in their profile, right? Yeah. Um, and I, then I searched for Python. There are 2.9 million people who have Python, you know, in their results, yeah. right? Uh, in their profile. Um, and I think a big part of it is because, you're, to your point, right? It's um, people that can make a living at it. Right, mm -hmm. they can. They it's it's they see it as the value there, and and so it's and of course they of course mention it on their their LinkedIn profile because they want to get a job because of their knowledge in it, right? And yet, I I'm sure Auto Hockey has a lot more people than four thousand people that you know use it, and yet they don't think to put it on their resume, right? Yet it it definitely is something that that can really help in the workforce, right? In so many ways, that you know are amazing. Yeah, just to kind of humor me, could you try and do the same thing with uh, AutoEd? Sure. Yeah, just I, I have an idea that that number might actually be higher than the one. Um, sixteen thousand seven hundred fifty-one. Yeah. So yeah, four times. Yeah, at at one point at least. That's a great point. Yep. Yeah. When you today look at the trends of who's Googled the most and stuff like that, are the hotkey is slightly gaining or maybe even winning a little bit over auto hotkey or auto it? Yeah. Who we originally was stem from. Uh, yeah. yeah, stem from. So, so it makes an okay sense to kind of compare ourselves to them. But they have always had a very strict um, conduct on their forums of being serious and wanting people to be developer-like and maybe not being too newbie friendly, which is of yeah. course, that's our niche. Newbies Absolutely. can come to right. us and they can right. get help with game related things. And of course we can remove that if we don't want to remove uh, a big amount of our users. But yeah. again, they still have had this, you can use this as something to promote your skill in a work situation. So hence, four times more people are actually telling the world right. that they can do it. Right. So, yeah. Right. It's a matter of branding or whatever you would call that. No, I, yeah, I think, yeah. And, and, and they're positioning themselves as that's what they work in and they're leveraging, trying to leverage that knowledge um, and, and, but I, and I think it's, it still stems back to, I think you nailed it earlier of if, uh, if I don't go out and, and say, Hey, I'm making money doing this. And then other people, then there are people who realize you can hire someone who works. Why, how, how, why do I expect a manager would realize they can hire someone using auto hotkey if, if, if you don't even realize there's people to do this. Yeah. Right. Like, so I, I, I it never thought about it that way, but I'm part of the problem. Right. In that sense of, I need to be more vocal about using it for work and making money and, and Hey, let's skip the whole making money side of things. Let's just talk about how much time I saved them. Yeah. Right. Look at it that yeah. way. Fine. It doesn't time is money to me. So like it either way works. Well, when I worked at the hospital back in the day where it was a temporary position for yep. a project they had, and this project kept going on and on and, and they kept extending my, my actual time there. By the end of it, and I had learned auto hotkey maybe over the last year of, of the time as well as there, I, with, together with my nearest colleague, we had written a document that listed how much time I saved each time yeah. I had offered this script for those people. Yeah that for the technicians, that for the nurses, that for those. And each time they saved 30 seconds, yeah. one minute, something like that, all the time down the list. But some of it was something that the nurses used maybe eight times in a day. Yeah. And each time they saved 30 minutes, 
uh, yeah. 30 seconds. And yeah, it adds up fast. Yeah. The thing was that there was a thousand, uh, a thousand nurses. Right. There, so, and yeah, 4,000 minutes a day. Right. Exactly. That's, so, yeah. so it, it was just, I had that one and I offered it, offered it yeah. at, at the final stage of where I, the project wasn't done, but um, my, my time there was getting to, to the point of ending. And even though I could offer up that list of actual amount of yeah. time I had saved, yeah. it wasn't good enough. Right. Yeah. But correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Didn't you, other people didn't get extended as long as you did. Isn't that right? Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. were, you kept making the cut mainly because you were finding ways to save them, you know, um, t time or money or whatever. But it is correct that, yeah, I, I had used it a couple of times to actually extend my stay there. Yeah. That's, that's correct. Uh, but at the end where I had this document, as one of my friends says, you're maybe one of the only people I know that can document your value. Yeah. Of course, it, it, I'm not the only one who could do that. But when you looked at it, I actually saved the, the hospital more time in a week than I was there in a week. So compare sure. those things to each other, I could actually say that I was saving them more than yeah. it cost to keep well, and, and And correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the time being saved by the minute, they probably made 10 times, I don't know, compared to what you were getting paid, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. it, it's the time-wise might have been nearly the same or more, but the money saved was incredible, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. People who were, yeah, just the, the things that removing obstacles in their day so they e even had an easier time with, with whatever they needed to, to get done on a computer. Yeah. That, that's also worth taking into consideration, at least, that if people are frustrating because of something working in a weird way or in a obscure right. way, and you can remove that almost entirely or save them maybe f five clicks of yeah. going through and making window load. And if you could just remove that, with, with a little bit of extra code on top of it, people are, they're, they're so happy with saving just five clicks as an example. And yeah. Oh, I agree. I, I'd even, even simplify it one more notch in, cause I've done this in some programs I use, cause they'll have a built in hotkey for doing something, but it's not the, 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 the key combination that makes sense to me. And so I'll just remap, you know, the thing to make it what does make sense to me. And so it, it's, I can, I can get the computer to work the way I think, not the way some random person mm -hmm. you know, wrote it thinks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, that alone is like, it's such a simple, or the other big one I do is I disable the, the insert key, mm -hmm. right? Cause I like, I, I would find myself bumping into it and then typing and realized I typed over shit that I didn't want to type over. And it was so frustrating. And I'm like, it's just gone. You can't, you can't do anything to, to get it to activate. Um, and I'm happy about that. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, that's at least one thing I, I believe could move the language on. Yeah. Because no, it's a very good point. At, at some point, uh, our hotkey might get to, to a place where it, it can't compete anymore. Uh, at lo as long as we use it and, and as long as Windows has the backwards compatibility and yeah. and the market share that it does. Sure. If that at one point declines because of handheld stuff and everything switching to Android or right. iOS or whatever it might be, yeah, yeah we would be hard pressed to follow with Auto Hotkey as it is. I, I got to think you and I are, are and, and, and you, uh, more you than, or, or sorry, more me than you. I'm old enough where I don't have to worry about it, right? <laughs> I'd even say you're probably old enough where, you, you know, because it's going to take, even when if it's a big shift, it's going to take time to, to switch over, right? That, But um, I think someone 10 years younger than you, I would definitely be like going, yeah, I don't know. Um, it, 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 could, it could disappear entirely. It's possible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, estimating what will happen ten, 10 years into the future with uh, uh, 
software is almost impossible. That, yeah. That's for sure. And and I I tw almost 24 years ago when I bought my first computer for my confirmation money, um, I I loved computers already, and and it was an Olivetti two 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 six two eighty six I think. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And and uh, with a eighty twenty eight bit modem, I think I found some. Oh, if you were lucky, if it was that, it wasn't a fourteen yeah. four. I, yeah. I can't remember which one of them it was. I, I just remember it wasn't an, uh, a 56 one. So it, it was yeah. before that. And since that, it, it's just exploded. And of course, 25 years is a lot. But back then, it, the school had one somewhere in the back room somewhere you could find maybe. Yeah. Uh, nobody used it. And... Yeah, it, it was, someone has had bought it at one point. And while I was still at school, within three years or something, we had entire classes about learning computers. Yeah. And from there on out, now we have computers that are more powerful than the first one I bought in my pocket. And, and again, 10 years out, where are we at? The, at the moment, it seems to kind of have having maybe plateaued a little bit. A little bit, yeah. With with at least with phones and stuff like that. I, I just saw in the newspaper today that Apple had launched yeah. iPhone XS, where where um, where the only thing they've they've really done is the same thing that they've done each time they've added the S. They've they've changed a little bit of hardware and stuff, but again iPhones and other phones like them haven't really changed much over the last four years or so. Yeah. So, so I, I believe I have a seven in my pocket. It ha I have no issues with, with what it can do. And it, it works flawlessly for all the games I, I use when I have a little spare time or when I browse stuff or when I stream stuff or it, it has no issues. So, so all of these, now it's almost three generations of, of new phones, hasn't added anything that I need. Yeah. They might have a new interface. They might want me to use more money on buying a new model and all of that stuff. But whereas the computers over time had that as well, but now I had a four-year-old computer that right. died on me this summer. And I had to go out and buy a new one. And yeah, there was a new generation of, of CPUs. There was a new graphics card and stuff like that, that that I now have in this one. I paid the exact same thing for this one as I did for the one four years ago. Yeah. But the one four years ago had the same specs just in earlier um, generations. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. the generations and stuff might have been, become better, but I had no need to really upgrade. Maybe if I wanted to play very high graphic games and stuff like that, that, that that's the thing. But just looking at it over a four year period, it, it's kind of like, what, what's the new thing? And at one point it will, it will come, something yep. will happen and everybody will, will switch to Linux or something like that. Who, who knows? Probably not. It would have happened already, I'm sure. But yeah, so knowing where our hot key is heading or if it's a thing in 10 years, it's really hard to say. Yeah, yeah. but um, hopefully, uh, again, we, as we were talking, um, I, I think over time, we're, the, the whole world is getting more and more, they're finding ways to use computers to replace the more mundane human jobs, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what I haven't seen at all yet is like they actually realize more of our daily work could be automated, even if it's still done by the same people, it's just you're more efficient, right? Um, but uh, may maybe at some point that can hopefully happen where um, people, and, and I think we talked about this, like, you know, losing your job, 
losing a mundane job shouldn't be a bad thing. Like, you know, if it frees you up to study something else that you can be both more productive and make more money in, right? I mean, yeah, that's a good thing for everybody. I, I saw a TED talk the other day that, that was about the future and where is it all heading and are we all losing our jobs? Mm -hmm. And of course, I am in an IT position and somewhere I can see that being fulfilled by software in a couple of years, perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps, but I'm, I'm slightly over optimistic about the future. And I've, I've always been happy having it like that. And I know that people might fear losing their jobs, maybe, trucks will be able to drive themselves in five years or something. And what about all the truck drivers? And yep. back in time when that happens, it's always happened as far back as we can see. Yeah, something absolutely. new has come in and, right. and someone has lost their job. The way of the world, it's nothing new. Yeah. And, and what he said in this TED talk was that the thing this time is that it seems to be happening way quicker than it did before. So oh. before when, when people, let's say a, a Smith, he lost his job. Yep. Yep. It happened over uh, such a long period that yep. this, the people who were Smith, the blacksmiths yep. or whatever, yeah. they, they had the chance of actually yep. getting something else. And by, by doing that, switching that, it created uh, new jobs that they could then get, get, and, but this time around, where the computer is actually taking over the job, it does it in, uh, let's say, a year yeah. instead of, of uh, half a generation. It, it happens within one year, perhaps, and, and all of those jobs just goes away. And, and society as it's built today can't really uh, adjust to that, adjust yeah. that quickly. But people are then talking about rioting and if someone going insane and whatnot. But to me, it's just like, yeah, but nobody in the world will actually allow for, let's say, 80% of people not having a job. Then either the model has to switch or the, the way that that jobs are offered out or the pay or whatever it might be, the cost of living, something has to give yeah. because of course, nobody is just going to live in anarchy. It right. just doesn't make sense. Right. No, it doesn't. So, yeah. so uh, something will happen and it might be good. It might be bad, but something will at least happen that will make us adjust to that once more. Well, I, the other thing I, I would say is until we figure out what that point is, I think it'd be hard to argue that, hey, while that's approaching, you are you are. It's even more critical that you make sure you keep investing in yourself in other skills, um, you know, yeah. not just in like what you do, but learn other things to have other options, right? Um, yeah, I, I I talked with a colleague the other day, and at least we feel that our generation and other previous generations can have felt pr precisely the same way is to be feel very flexible when we come into the job uh, yeah. instead of thinking that, Oh, I'll stay oh, yeah. here and do this task right. for the next 20 years. 20 years. years. Yeah. Uh, most people have, let's say a five year plan. Yeah. If or, that. or something like that yeah. you know, where, where they have, maybe I'll stay here for that long or maybe I'll right. take this or maybe I want to become that. And I know at least here in, in Denmark, we have, at least from what I've seen over my lifetime, people are pretty good at getting a second or third education, shifting yeah. gears. And, sure. Yeah. Um, my, my, a couple of my family members has done it and my wife is doing it and, and I've done it and I see friends and people like that doing it. And, it seems as if there is just now, and that's just what you have to know that you need to yeah. do. You need to yeah. keep being, yeah. 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 Continuous to, education. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Learning new things. I mean, I, it's a silly example, but when, when Microsoft's office first switched to using the ribbon, 
Mm -hmm. Oh my word. I hated that. And honestly, I'll still say rightfully so, because you couldn't customize it. They got rid of the other menu. They didn't have the toolbar where you could add your own buttons, right? It was do it this way or else. That was the only option. And I just absolutely hated it. So I didn't learn the new office for quite a while. And yet I knew Excel really well and in word and things. And then, um, I finally realized like, you know what? Um, I'm getting to where this was like in 2013 where I'm like, people are looking at me like, you don't, you don't know how to where this is, you know? And I'm like, all right, I got to bite the bullet. I got to learn, you know, use the ribbon and actually learn it. Um, and, uh, and, and, and after I realized I could actually customize it and make it the way it made sense to me that the concept isn't a bad thing to me. Mm -hmm. It was how they organized it to me. It was just never intuitive, but, um, I, I finally said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the old fart that like doesn't, can't get a job because he doesn't know the new technology. So I, I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to get it. I'm going to do pivot tables and this stuff and I'm going to learn it because I don't want the alternative, right? I don't want to wake up, wait, realizing I'm, I'm, I'm incapable of getting a job, right? So I might as well learn it while I'm working, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. I, I have a, a colleague at work who's, I think, 66 years i think and uh, i believe he could have he could have pensioned himself off by now but i think that the actual ending point for his generation is at about 67 and he can stay on if he wants to and stuff like that yeah. it depends but yeah he'll probably stay on a couple more years but when i come and introduce new stuff either in a complex uh, economics program or uh, a new mobile thing that we need to use or stuff like that. He's all ears. He's on it. He might not be the best at getting yeah. it immediately, wow. but he's, he's there and he puts in the needed effort yeah. to at least learn. Uh, Good for him. The base. Yeah. yeah. But I can, I can have someone who's 35 who will not do the same thing. Yeah. And, and I, I, most of the guys that age will do it, but it's, it's just interesting to see that it doesn't really matter where, where you are aged. It's, it's just a matter of actually being willing to new, yeah, learn new stuff. Yeah. 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 Like, I mean, there's that old uh, saying, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. And there are, I mean, a lot of people get set in your ways, but I think you're right. It's, it's often, it's, it's, it's not the age of the dog. It's just the mentality of the person. Yeah. And when you're really young, it's very rare where that happens, but mm. maybe mid twenties, somewhere in there, suddenly you're just like, I'm, I'm doing this this way. And um, that openness goes away. Yeah. Awesome. Well, is there anything else? We've been talking for quite a while and, and I'm enjoying it, but it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's getting long. Is there anything else we should cover? I don't, I don't have anything on my mind right now. No. I, I guess the other thing I would say is which, which you'd agree with is you know, for everybody stay at it. Keep, keep improving yourself no matter where you are. Um, whether it's auto hockey or anything, right. Yeah. Um, keep, keep learning, um, keep studying, keep adding value and finding ways to save time and, and, you know, do what you love instead of, the, the sucky stuff <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely and and again as as we talked about earlier i used the other key for quite and i still do to to kind of gamify in mundane tasks yep. and and if you can find anything that does that for you um of right. course some people they did already love what they do but most people can find something they find mundane and if you do it at a computer and it is something it, almost anything feels as if it can be automated when you learn it. Yeah. Yeah. That was part, part, I forget who I was talking to, but we were talking about it. It's that ability to realize you're doing the same thing over and over. Some people, like, I think the more you do with automation, the more you're able, it's easier to spot that repetition. And yet when you're new to it, you don't realize, Oh, I, I open this folder every time, you know, when I open this folder, I open this file and this file, right? It's like any stupid things like that. You're like, that's, that's part of what we're talking about. Yeah, and uh, now I'll, I'll just touch on it, but Red X as an example, yeah. um, where, where people might be inclined to think, okay, if this word is always there, then I know I can find it. 
But if you learn something like Red X, which is kind of skill as well, sure. then if I have something that looks like this pattern, yeah, not, not words, not but right. it always has this length with this yep. at the end. You can find it yep. and and grab whatever you need. And it's the same as you said with the automation. If you get used to automating enough different types of tasks, you'll much more easily spot tasks that are um, yep. repeatable. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I like that because I hadn't thought of because regex works the same way too. The more you do. Sometimes I had them at TI. We'd have their their parts, and and it took me a while to to realize it's is it this many characters, and then it's a number, or is it this, or is it 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 switches back and forth, or whatever. And it's not always as obvious as you think it is. Um, but boy, the more you practice it, the easier your brain starts thinking very differently. Yeah. And uh, and and yeah, that's interesting. Is um, I, I think it adapts well to automation in general of. Um, the more you start paying attention to it and break it down into a series of what you're doing, right? The easier, I, I know manufacturing companies, right? They spend a ton of money mm -hmm. looking at the flow, right? And saying, here's a human hand doing there. This is doing this and this, wait a minute. This is, this hand goes back twice, you know, let's streamline it to, to have it go just once. And they, they spend a lot of time to streamline that process. And yet in the office environment, like that almost never happens. People thinking about, you know, how do I, how do I do this every time? Hey, you know what? I'm these things. I do three things every time. Let's just make a bookmark that launches all three, right? Or whatever. I, yeah. I, I had a, a, a thing at work recently where uh, some guy, he, he, uh, he had to write in a specific ID number on uh, some components that he had to find on a map where where they were only listed as, as that yeah. number. And he was getting it from some PDFs and, and that's fair enough. These PDFs was then invoices that had been scanned. Okay. Um, and the thing was that he got them and he actually just wanted a, help with with making it maybe easier for him to to put up two windows next to each other so he yeah. could watch it like that i was like but hey you could use maybe some ocr software yeah. to to get those and and he's he's loved that part of it but then i said but but why are these actually scanned they they all seem typed and and i know that our company only accepts digital invoices yeah. yeah and 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 within a couple of days he he had it so he kind of researched it and and it, yeah. it actually was like they came in digitally then someone yeah. printed them oh. out looked oh. them over and found the ones that was related to this thing scan yeah. those in and send them in an email to the right person Ah. I was like, <laughs> oh, my. that just needs to be cut away. Don't, yeah. what? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, but yeah. And I believe there's a lot of that stuff. That's hilarious. Out there. That's a great, you know, and it's one of those things like, oh, I wish they taught more. Of just understanding the difference of a text file versus an image. And like, you already have it in a digital form, right? Just forward the, those instead of the PD, you know, scanning it. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's 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 a great, I love it in, in a terrible way, right? Because it's just, it's so painful when you hear those stories. At the same time, you go, look, we, we've identified this thing and we've stopped doing it, right? So it's it's more painful not to stop doing it. So it's always good to find those. Yeah. But um, like, you, you just, it's amazing what some people do. You're mm -hmm. like, yep. Okay, someone said do this, so I did it. That's the other yeah. the lack of thinking. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you, man. It's been great talking to you. I'm looking forward to um, next month's webinar, Auto Hotkey H uh, with Hotkey it and other ones, whatever we're you know. Oh, actually, that I think the next one after that, John's going to do the database one. Hopefully, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. an example of that one. So that'll be fun. But um, yeah, cool stuff. It's been great over the years working with you and doing all these. Um, it's it's been. It, it, which is another thing I, I've mentioned in my other interviews, but because I've mentioned you to people, I said, look, for people who are new to auto hotkey and doing the stuff, 
find someone, anyone, even if they're not someone like, like I, I often, you know, would ask you for support. But when we started realizing we're both passionate about this, it was, it was very communal. We were both dealing with a lot of the same stuff at work. Having someone else that you hear the same stories and frustrations, but often, you know, like when, when I come up with the new, like let's say OCR as an example, I'm going to work in something new. I'll ping like you and Maestrieth and John and a couple other people and say like, Hey, have you guys worked in this area yet? And sometimes they've done something right. And I don't have to start from scratch. Right. First thing I do is search the forum. But after that, I'll, I'll ping you guys. Cause I don't want to bug everybody and be like, Oh wow. I can, you know, it maybe it's not perfect to my needs, but boy, it saves me a lot of time. Um, and then especially depending on the complexity, um, if they'll spend 20 minutes walking you through just a little bit of stuff, Oh, it saves hours. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's, yeah, it's so helpful. So absolutely. Um, awesome. Well, thank you. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll chat soon. Bye. Yeah, well, bye.